All right, Mom, we're recording. Start start the show. Greetings, humans and earthlings and any animals who might be listening to the uh, four-legged uh, kingdom. Welcome, and I know you're attracted to my melodious and beautiful voice, which drips words of truth, and that's why even uh, all mammals, all beings, all sentient beings love to hear what I have to say because I speak the truth. Welcome to the Roseanne Barr Podcast. So you see, my patience is growing thin. Well done. Well, Ma, you should tell people why we're doing a split screen. We've only done it one other time. Um, no, you do it. All right, I'll just tell you guys real quick, you know, we want to get back to the production quality that we did with the nice cameras and the good audio. We've just been traveling like crazy. My mother was in Hawaii for like the last six weeks. And we're now back in Texas for three days. We're next week, we're going to Florida. My mom's going to do a fundraiser for Carrie Lake, who we love to death. And we're going to set up the old school podcast with the good cameras and the good audio there. We're going to interview most likely, Ma, I don't want to do a spoiler alert because it's not booked, but I think... Don't say it because these these uh, these so-called whatever, they're, they're running for the hills when they see me coming for some reason, just so people know. Well, I'll Something, just say... This. Something's afoot. Something is afoot. But our friends, patriots... We'll be there at Mar-a-Lago with Carrie Lake, and we might be talking to a certain general, a former general, uh, who you've tweeted out as your new boyfriend for those. Wow, days. he is awfully cute. He is. So he's trying to stay an extra day just to do our podcast. Um, Jim Brewer might be coming. Uh, yeah. It's exciting. So I know that you guys, you know, we still do a show every week. We think we're Mr. doing a great job. Mr. Uh, what do you call it? Mr. Devolution. Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson. Yeah. So we got a lot of exciting shows coming up. But for this week, I just drove 19 hours. My mom just flew in last night. There's not enough I'm time. Tired. For My arm's tired. I'll tell you. I'm so stupid. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying we don't have time to edit this one. So it's going to be split screen like we did in Hawaii. And we're going to get to it right now. Thank you for sticking with us. And with that, Ma, let's get into it. Yeah. Yes, I was thinking of different ways I could uh, introduce the uh, subject. There's so many things on my mind. Um, it was just crazy. Today I had I had a tete-a-tete, -a, -tete, a meeting with my daughter, the ultimate lefty. How did that go? And, uh, she's 50, and uh, she's the ultimate lefty. And we agree to not agree <laughs> always, but... Uh, Today, we, she went, Mother, I just called to see how you're doing. I really don't want to get into any anything political with you because I know where it goes. It's your fault. You know, it's all your fault that you've chosen to be on the side of fascists and the, 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 the Trump derangement syndrome. And I go, no, you guys are the ones that started all the shit and you're the fascists. Yeah. She goes, Mother, I, I said, well, what? They're going to kill all the Jews. Well, Mother, I cannot, I cannot accommodate... 1% of the world's population getting all the money while 99% of the world suffers mother. And if that makes me a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, can we both agree that Nazis are running the world? And she said, yes. Yeah. And then she's going to vote so for it. Made headway. That's a good. So why did she start with the political thing with you to begin with? Because we got into the how my mom won't let anyone in her house if they're not vaccined. And we're not vaccined, so she didn't let us go see her. She's 90, she don't let us come. But she lets my daughters and, you know, whoever in the family is vaccinated, she'll let them come to her house. Provided they go to a hotel for two days and take all kind of tests. And then if they don't have the COVID, then she'll let them come over to her house. Otherwise, they have to sit on her porch and talk to her through her screen. She won't even let us do that. I've I've what? already, tried, I, Bubby won't even let us, I told her Hannah, and I, she's never met Hannah or my daughter. And I said, we'll stand out in the street with a bullhorn and wave at you through the window. And she was too scared that us being within 60 feet of her because we're not vaccinated was too dangerous for her. But yeah, I'm, he went to her grand, grand daughters, or is she a trans? I don't know. She went to her high school graduate, his base graduations <laughs> at high school with 2000 
yeah. uh, Mormons there in Salt Lake. Who knows? A lot of them probably weren't vaccinated. No, Mormons she was. Do about the Mormon people. They're not about to take any vaccines. No, unless she was, the church yeah. tells them to. And I don't think the church told the people to get vaccinated. No. And I just have a question. So let's just bitch about the family. They're very we- different from the Jews. The did- Mormon church did not tell their folk to get vaccinated, whereas the Jews in Israel, their folk did tell them to get vaccinated. Look what they do, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. So Jessica's still, to be clear, she's still pro-vaccine with everything we know now. She still thinks she made the right call. And we're the well, um- then then she we said who was dying and who was dying most, and of course I said that I said ethnic groups were targeted for particular vaccinations, which she agreed that, that might be. But then she goes, do, 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 you know, it's indicating conspiracy theory. But I said, I do believe that certain ethnic minorities were targeted with certain vaccines. And it is proven, I mean, to me it is, because I read peer review studies from the CDC. None of them do. None of the journalists read anything. My God, they're just paid hacks from the DNC. They're just paid friggin' hacks. And I'm up and on over paid hacks, whether they be on X, where I don't know what it is with uh, Enos, what's his name? Musk. Elon Musk? Enos? <laughs> Jesus. Getting dementia? Like, you've never been that far off. Sometimes you'll call me Buck, but I've never heard Enos. I yeah, think- Elon Musk. Well, what were we saying? Well, first finish the story about Bubby real quick and then get into Elon because Bubby okay. did do an open air graduation like a week after she told me she couldn't meet my wife or baby because she was worried about COVID. And she's like, no, it's just too scary. It's like, I'll take a test. I'll do whatever you need. I'll quarantine. No, it's too scary. And then I went on Instagram and she was in a basketball arena with about 3,000 people and no one had. You know what it is, son? It is. And they won't admit it, but it's MK Ultra Trump derangement syndrome because you're going to get around the great unwashed of the trump folk the ones that cling to their guns and their bibles and all that you know you know the unwashed the racist the you know no we get ostracized yeah no we're ostracized because we're fascist and crazy even though they're the ones ostracizing us not meeting our children yeah whatever i don't want to i don't want to i mean I, I can go off all day on this and it's family. No, and it's the mirror world. That's yeah. what happened to the Jews in Germany. You know, the Jew, Jews in Germany were, were told that they had to, in order to protect them from the bacteria and the uh, disease that was going around, they needed to go to the inner cities. They were being repopulated, uh, re- removed, rehomed to yeah. the inner cities to protect them. And that's why they went. That's why they went without any, uh, you know, protestation or riots, because they believed, oh, we're going to protect us from the uh, disease, the the uh, bacteria. You know, it, it it is just always the same thing over and over, but the people never catch on to it because they're so racist and so Jew hating and so caste bound class conscious that they can't break out of it to see what's right in front of their face and that is what is terrifying and the fact of it is that uh fact horrifies them they'll do anything to censor it Mm -hmm. and uh, and then the sheep applaud them for censoring fact which and then call you the fascist and censor and book burner while they're doing it to you. It's so a it's mirror like, world. Well, it's like uh, it's gaslighting at the level never never seen before. And then it's they well, gas. I did disagree. Gaslighting a level never seen before, except for I was married to Tom Arnold. <laughs> yeah. Gaslighted beyond what yeah. Satan is doing to the American people. Yeah, but it's tough to see it in your own family. You know what I mean? Like everyone's dealing with this. What what we're talking about is completely relatable to uh, I, most people, especially in America. Like whatever side you're on, half of the family is looking at the other half as the crazy mind controlled one. And that's, mm-hmm. we've been divided. We've been conquered. Shit's really ugly now. It's already, sometimes when we talk to Robbie Starbuck, for instance, sometimes it comes up that it might be too late or we're in the last hour. And I certainly feel that way. And if, if, 
you know, Jessica still thinks this is about, Jessica's my sister that we're talking about. If she still thinks it's about financial equality at this point, and that's what she's voting on. I mean, she's 16, 20 years behind what's actually happening. And that's really what it comes down to. And then I'll, I'll won't say any more. I've noticed it's not a left versus right thing anymore. It's people that are in the present and people that are in the past. And liberals tend to be more in the past. They still see the world the way it was. They haven't caught up to the way it is. We are the ones that see the way it is. We're sensing it. We've read the books. We know what Orwell is. Like we see, we got all these women. They don't see it. And that's what's sad. It's just uh, smart what I think it is. The liberals see the world and how terrible it is. And we can you know whatever we are, populists, intelligent people, Same. unaffiliated independent thinkers. We see the world of how great it could get with just a few flicks of correction yeah. because we're smart. Yeah. We're, not, we're not idiots that have to dredge through the shit every day to make ourselves feel good. I mean, they have to dredge through the shit just to deal with their depressive nature. And their depressive nature is, as Judaism says, uh, you're depressed because you're not doing enough to help other people. Duh. Yeah, and they're I mean, all mentioned. And nobody will allow anything about Judaism to be taught. The only thing they do is keep on saying Judaism is bad and, you know, trying to censor Judaism. And I've seen it for all of these many years. But the fact is they're not going to censor it because it's good and it's basic common sense. And you're not going to, you're not going to uh, dress it up as some shit it ain't. You, you're just not. You're not going to win this time. And um, well, you know. let's get into it because this is what I, I want to talk about um, because I think it's really important to talk about right now is the. And if you don't want to talk about it, you can change the subject because I don't want to get you uncomfortable. But the, the Candace Owens, Rabbi Shmuley thing, this is something we know both of them personally. We know yeah. Shmuley probably a little better. Um, we, yeah, we know him better. We're also on this podcast have been touching on Israel for some time. We're obviously quote unquote Zionists. And, um, you know, there's a fracture in the left. There's a fracture in the right now. Israel seems to have cross sectioned. Like I said, it's no longer right and left. And the other way, it's not just right and left. It's left Zionist, left anti Semite, right Zionist, right anti Semite. It's now a quadrant. Israel really is this issue that triggers everybody and it's emotional for everybody and everybody's fractured. So when this Candace thing broke, I picked you up at the airport last night and I asked you, what did you think about Candace Owens? And if you're comfortable, I'd like you to tell your thoughts on it without, you know, if, if you're comfortable, I don't want to cause trouble, but I know that you were upset. For both Candace and Shmuley, yeah. Rabbi Shmuley, I, I felt so sad because both of them, were friends to me when I was so devastated when I was fired. Mm -hmm. Both of them came to my defense were friends to me. Yeah. And uh, neither one really defended me because they didn't either one know what in the hell I was talking about yeah. at all. They thought, they thought I said somebody, you know, they thought I was talking about something on the surface about how somebody looked like somebody in character, but yeah. it, oh no, it was. 40 levels deeper than that. And it was about the Iran deal, which was realized on October 7th, my tweet. No, 100%. But, um, and, not, and not one Jewish outlet in America has ever asked me about it. No. But anyway, um, and I was fired and blacklisted, and then they tried to take my life. But, but, not, were... but not one has asked me about it. No, but the Shmuley was very supportive and, uh, you know, Candace was as so well. So was Candace. And yep. so it's hard for me to say, given, but I'm just like, I did pray about it. And I was like asking, what do I do when they were allies and I love them both? Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer came, well, I need to give them each a, a slap. <laughs> I can love is what Hashem's giving me. I've got to slap them upside the head like a, a good grandma would, a good mom would. You go, no, you're not going to do that. Oh my God, not mom near enough. No, you got to correct it. You know, that's why your mom and your grandma slaps you right in the face or the head. It never should be done by a man. 
Yeah. It should always be done by the mom or the grandma. They slap you lightly in your head because it does rework your mind so yeah. you can re recircuit your circuitry, right? It's 100%. like, oh my God, wait, it was painful. What did I do? Oh, I got to fix that. Yeah. You don't go, that's okay, Jimmy, because the kid will never recircuit his circuitry, right? Oh, no, 100%. Slap your kids. I'm all for it. I want to start a new campaign. Yeah, I want to be bullying, fat shaming. 100%. But anyway, the thing about Candace that I want to talk to you about specifically, because I think you and I yeah, might be. You can say all the shit you want about Israel, mm -hmm. girl. You can say that they did this in your opinion. They're doing that and you, you don't feel it's right. But Christ is king. That's where you went over the line, girl. That's where you crossed mm -hmm. the river, Colin. You went beyond the pill because that's about Jews, not Israel. Okay, mm -hmm. get it? Can you explain this? I didn't dig it. What does this mean? Because I got Jews, not Israel, the Jews. But what I'm saying is when I saw the crisis king. And then she goes out there and goes, you can't even criticize Israel. No, but you didn't do that, Candace. You went on the Jews, the Jewish religion. You crossed the Jewish religion, the Jewish Torah, the Jewish belief system you went deep and you didn't need to. And that was a sin. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have cut tie with source, what Jesus was, the source of that, and he was with that. You shouldn't have insulted that source, Candace, and you need to repent for that. And that's your slap to get your rewiring straight if you want to stay on the side of Hashem and Torah, because that's what we're living in. The Torah, the five books of Moses, Candace. But how yeah. is that? How is, what, how is what you're saying? And I'm just playing devil's advocate, and doing a good producing job here. How is you saying this is you live in the Torah, Candace? How is that different than her saying Christ is king? Because she's saying her religion, this is our tenet. And you're saying this is our tenet of our religion. And you're both claiming that each one of your sides is right. Meanwhile, you're saying she's anti-Semitic, but I could make the claim that that would be anti-Christian of you. I'm not saying this. I'm just saying I could make the claim for you to say we live in Torah, that that denies the New Testament. Isn't that the same exact thing? You know what I mean? It's a checkmate for sure. Okay. But she shouldn't have went there. And so, yeah, I did I did step up and checkmate her for sure. But she okay. shouldn't have done it. Why? Because, is that, is because you didn't need to. Because there was peace there and you didn't need to take it over the Rubicon to be on the pill. You didn't need to do that, but you did. So why is Christ is King offensive to you? Because she's basically saying my religion is the truth and yours is not to all Jews and Muslims and all and whatnot. Is that what yeah, the problem is? It's okay. words. Yes, it's words of war and they weren't called for at the time. Okay. Words of war were not called for. Uh, it's like, why are you doing that? Why are you speaking words of war to a people who were just attacked and mass raped? Why are you speaking words of war to them? Why, why are you doing that? Do you think she was trolling Jews or do you think? I do. And I think she's been doing it for a long time since she got with Kanye. Mm -hmm. I think she's been trolling Jews for a long time. And so have I. I mean, come on. I troll the same Jews as them, but I can do it because I am a Jew, and they can't. Neither can Whoopi Goldberg, and I have said that. Okay. Even, though she, even though she culturally appropriated the names of my people, Whoopi Goldberg, her name's Karen Johnson, and she can't be doing that. Only I can do it. I'll right. call out my own people when they're wrong, and by God, they are wrong, and they do need calling out. But these people, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, who else were we just talking about? Candace Owens and uh -huh, Candace Owens. Who else? Kanye. Why don't you talk about P. Diddy for a while? Why don't you do that? Get on your own, folk, and let me get on my own. And just you, you stop talking about that Jews, Dave Chappelle. Talk about your own people. Talk about Farrakhan and them, Dave mm -hmm. Chappelle. Talk mm -hmm. about your own people and leave me and my people on you. STFU about the Jews. I'm telling you, stop it. Okay. That's so right. You, you need to learn some cultural sensitivity because you're causing, you're caught, you are allowing Jewish students to be beaten on American college campuses. Is that what you want, Nazi? Is that what you want, fascist? 
Can we do the one thing that nobody ever does, please? Because since we're Jewish and we're pro-Israel, could we do the one thing that nobody has the balls to do and talk about our side, the side that we're on, and what they are doing wrong and what they're doing right instead of making an emotional argument and saying, my side's right? Like, when people are critical of Israel, like Candace, we certainly can understand being critical of any world government, right? Nobody's perfect. Israel's not perfect. Uh, the U.S. is not perfect. No, no country has ever been perfect, right? But the problem is we start feeling emotional, like we have to defend Israel. We have to defend the U.S. And it becomes this thing where people I'm don't- I'm not defending Israel. I'm not defending the U.S. Good. I'm Let's saying they got 14 million Jews left in the world that you didn't kill yet. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Hello? They do the, they do the study saying they should they should have been 800 million of them like they is Arabs if you didn't keep on coming to kill us for over 2000 years you better stop it because you will answer for it and that is what's coming you don't like it but it is coming and God is behind it and you're not going to do it no more because it ain't right your double standards are not right and they're going to go bye bye all your double standards are evil I have what, to, you did, what you did, you took you took the Torah and you switched it up and you turned it upside down. You called everything in the Torah evil. You you called the Messiah the Antichrist. That's what you did. You know what? It tells you don't screw with these books. It tells you don't touch these books. Don't add one jot or one tittle to these books. But you did it and you're proud of it. And then you come over here when people are dying and being raped and kidnapped and held and raped in tunnels by your uh, UN folk that you love, you Democrats, you love them. Yeah. You Nazis, you love it. Hitler founded the Muslim Brotherhood. You love it. Yeah, there is there is some liars, you're nothing but devils, demons, and liars. And I hate to tell you, you're all on the same side, and you got a lot of Jews with you. You got the uh, what you call them, Jacobins. They're all up there with you. I'm a Jew, Jew. Listen I'm to this. You. The left demon. The left a Lucifer Satan. I don't I, worship that I shit. Feel like I'm watching like the 700 Club at like three in the morning. The no, you're Howard Beal. I'm mad as hell. And I'm not gonna take it no more. And that's what God told me. He said, Roseanne, I want you to tell people. Right. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take it anymore. And if they think they're gonna get on my Jewish people another time, it's right. not going to happen but i want to talk about the jewish people that most please. sophisticated weapons in the world why oh why do you want to provoke the most powerful people on earth with the most deadly weapons ask yourself why oh why oh why would i do that but can we please talk about the american lefty Jew, the Soros Jew, because that's what Candace is talking about and Alex Jones, and we are on that's their why side. I'm with. not going to go on hating her because like I said, Candace, you're right, but I told her, like, Let's I, talk told about Willie, it. like I told all of the damn Jews, and I say damn Jews, like I told all the damn Christians, but they don't listen to me neither, none of them do. It's called Arab Rav. It's a big Jew, right? Evil scouts. They're like double agents. And what they are is the people that God told Moses, do not remove them when you go out of slavery because they are intermarried with Pharaoh. They sit in Pharaoh's courts. Even though they look like your peeps, they don't think like your peeps. They like slavery. They benefit mm -hmm. from it. Don't take them out with you. And Moses argued with God and God said, okay, F-A-F-O, Moses. And that is <laughs> When, and Moses did find out. That's why he could never enter the promised land because he F-A'd and F-O'd. So Arab Rob are fake. Can you explain to people? Each of the tribes, which was given in 150 different languages at the same time, Moses, he said, I F-A'd and I F-O'd. That was the gist of his last speech in Deuteronomy. So the... At the heir of Rob, this is like a double agent, a fake Jew, and this is what you're equating to the modern American leftist Jew, right? Is that the correlation you're making? You have to explain this stuff to people. They're not reading what you're reading all the time. You have to remember. They're from Pharaoh. They're from Pharaoh's court. 
They okay. are Pharaoh's bloodline. They're little fucking pharaohs. They're little so they're fucking tyrants. Little okay. fucking Hitlers. They're all got Swiss bank accounts. That's so the people you know. in America, the, oh, the alt right or whatever, the critical of, so the people that are critical of Jews here in America, our alt right friends, our leftist friends, they are critical of those Jews, right? Like we have to, we have to detail this for people because a lot of times people go Israel and Jews like it's one person. There's one Jew. There's not one Jew. There's not one black. There's not one any there's kind a, of people. There's 130 no. kinds of Jews. Okay, so the Jew that everybody's mad at in America is the same Jew that we are mad at as Zionists and Israel supporters. Yes, that's what I want you to say. If that's true, that that is what I believe you're saying. Because we defend Israel. We don't defend Soros. We don't defend the left. We don't defend the fucking ADL, for Christ's sakes. We think they're Hitler. Like, there is a lot of things that Jews, Jews that run the porn industry, Jews that run the entertainment industry, there are bad Jews out there. We are not on their side. But Israel and the Jewish people are not all that kind of Jew. And they deserve a place to live. If there were 15 Jewish states, I'd say, fuck Israel, let it go. It's the last place Jews have. There are a billion Muslims and a billion Christians. There are multiple states ran by both. If they lose one, they're fine. If we lose Israel, we are extinct. That's the difference. You can be critical of Israel, but you have to understand that being critical of Israel, oh shit, you dropped out. Damn it. Oh, I knew I was making too good of a point. Uh, we lost mom. Hey Siri, call Hannah. We just lost mom. Her computer dropped out. Can you go in there and try and get her online? I don't know what happened. I was making so much fucking sense. And God, is this the second time it. this already happened? It's the first time it's ever happened in my life. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if the internet went out. Uh, we were making good points. So I'm going to see if she can go, see if you can go into her Gmail and um, re still on. well, she's not in the show. So, so there's no internet, but. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send you a new one. Oh, oh my god, this is so sucky. Sorry, people. This is why I don't like to do podcasts late notice. I actually was gonna take this week off, but my wife Hannah was like, "No, people count on you guys weekly," and uh, so now we have like this complete dead air spot. Um, I'm gonna try and get my mom back on. There she is. She's back on. Uh, thank you. Oh, we lost you. You were smith by Lord the Lord. Smite me down there. Yeah, because he was like, Roseanne, let Jake talk. Let Jake finish the sentence. So he actually kicked you off the internet. Divine intervention. No, you know what I'm saying, though? Let's get back on it. We are not critical of Israel, but we are critical of Jewish people. And we are critical of a lot of things that Jewish people do, as anybody is. And we're not mad at Candace for being critical of Israel, right? I'm critical as fuck of Israel. Are you kidding? I am critical as fuck of Israel, but I don't think that any non-Jew can be critical of it. I think you got to be a Jew to be critical of Israel. Excuse me. I'm not going to start being critical of Nigeria. I mean, I will be because I am, but, you know, nobody's going to listen to me. I mean, right. obviously I found that out because the Nigerian government is doing a lot of great things. But it's doing a lot of fascist type things, which you shouldn't be doing. But who's going to listen to me? Well, I'm not going to listen to anybody who's not a Jew talking about Israel. I'm just not. Okay. But with, with the war in Gaza right now, with the civilian casualties, that seems to be why Israel is losing the moral high ground and losing global support. Even our hero, Trump, I says in the press that. The press says Israel's losing the moral high ground. It is not. That's well, a I, mean, I think moral high ground is a stupid That's conversation. Hollywood. That's Bullet. the Palestinian uh, great movie makers they got over there. You know, I think I hired a lot of those writers that end up moving over there to Gaza and writing for the Hollywood uh, Hollywood system over there. Those uh, movies you? they're making over there. I yeah. think that's a lot of the writers I fired off the Roseanne show over there. Every week you say that. You're like in every gov world government, the writers of your show are like the <laughs> Illuminati. Because they got some bad writers. <laughs> the one, it's the same lady that was raped last week mm -hmm. over there crying because she got raped. She weighs 350. She's 95 years old saying the Israelis was raping her. So yeah. this week they drag out the same actress yeah. 
saying that uh, she saw her. Uh, it, I mean, it's just, it's worse than Hollywood. But there are civilian casualties in Gaza. That is a real thing. That's what people are critical of. And whether you think there, there's more. I, I don't agree because the, when they get their statistics from Hamas. Right. And I, I mean, know yeah. this is the truth that nobody wants to hear. So I'll say it. And they can kiss my fat rich Jew ass as I do say it. Mm -hmm. But Israel is the only warring country ever in the history of humanity who does everything to keep civilian deaths down, who, who calculates mm -hmm. that. Yep. Like flies over, drops leaflets for weeks, get out, we're going to bomb. Nobody yep. else does that. So they calculate how to keep uh, civilian deaths to a minimum because of the pain of what we've lived through. So right. that's where they come at us going, ah, they indiscriminately. But no, I think what I've heard from my peeps mm -hmm. is, no, they went and got, they took as many kids out of there as they could get along with their moms. Of course they did the men and you know the boys under 18 who they classify as children but who are actually throwing grenades and shit you know well, the, they've been trained to be child soldiers which is a war crime and the and the uh, un has sponsored the palestinian children to be used as uh, child soldiers which is a war crime but they never say those war crimes because they're the left and the left's war crimes to the un and all that stuff they're only the accuser. It's like the witch trials of uh, Salem and all that. The yeah, you know, only the accuser can accuse. Not, and it's also like what's his name, Jacques in France. The accused can never defend themselves under this kind of fascist bullshit. But the truth is the truth, and there is the internet. So fuck you. You ain't gonna win. Fuck you. Yeah, and also. No one's talking about the hostages, right? Everyone's like, no, they moved them all south. They right. moved them all to south. And then they moved them all north. They're right. not starving. They're not the only ones that are starving is the ones that Hamas is holding and not feeding because they're stealing the food and selling it on the black market. They're starving the kids like they starved the kids to dig all them tunnels that Israel uh exposed in all those bombings the tunnels under every hospital and school of course oh and basically, look what the un did look what the un did those are war crimes yeah. those are clearly defined war crimes because that's what the nazis did the nazis did not lose ladies and gentlemen they just became the un now and i as we all know hitler and the Mufti of Jerusalem founded the Muslim Brotherhood. Yep. Hitler changed the name of Persia to Iran because Iran means Aryan in Farsi, the True. Fourth Reich. All Hello, fine. Americans, are you going to go willingly? You probably are because you're that damn dumb. I am sick and tired of trying to wake you up and have you tell me I'm crazy. Okay. Whatever, find out. F A O, you dumb bitches. I no longer give a rat's fucking ass. Fafo, you need a hand signal. You go Fafo, like West Side. I'm going to work on that. What is it? I don't F -A -O. Know, man, just be like Fafo, bitch. Anyway, I want to say, picture F -A this. F O F U. I love that. If there were liberal women in Marine County, right, in San Francisco, imagine, just want to give you this scenario. Imagine a bunch of Trumpers, like the January 6th writers, came into Marin County, stole all of your kids, raped women, killed you, and then went back to like Arkansas and were hiding in city centers. I guarantee you every one of those leftists in San Francisco would be down there with tanks and blowing every building up. That's what they don't understand. Hamas came into Israel, raped babies, killed women, and took it. They still have the hostages. That's why Israel is attacking Gaza, because they won't give the hostages back. They just turned yeah, down- Yeah, they never right? say- Give the hostages back. No. And they that go, ceasefire. Is that peace. It's yeah. ceasefire because they don't give a fuck about them baby hostages. It's gas They're exposing themselves, though. This is what God's doing. It He's saying, good. wow, witness it. Look, watch what they say. Watch what they do. Witness it. Because but the other thing is the reason there's such a civilian population. Something. 
in you're Hamas. You're supposed to be learning something from what you're seeing. Well, we have to teach people. That's what we do here at the Roseanne Bar Podcast. But this is the other thing. The city centers in Hamas, the whole Gaza, I mean, in Hamas, in Gaza, a lot of people also aren't talking about how there's no refugees allowed to flee into Egypt or Jordan or any other area around them. They are locked in because it benefits Hamas and all the surrounding areas of Jew haters to keep civilian centers around Hamas so that civilians die and they go, look how horrible Israel is. Well, you're horrible because you can get your civilians out. You're in war. You attacked. You provoked. Fafo bitches. And now you're not letting people escape. And then you take a picture of every person that dies. You're like, well, war people die in war. In Dresden bombings, World War II. We used to bomb cities all the time. We did it. Germany did it. Every from Russia. Fucking hold on. Syria. Read a, hold on. Read a fucking history book. Civilians die in war. That is nothing new. And Israel is not the first place that civilians had died at the hands of their weaponry. But for some reason, civilians, Israel is the only place. Okay, shut up, Dave. Shut up, Dave. I mean, the fact is, and I saw, I've, I met so many Palestinian people because yeah. I'm not a fucking idiot leftist or a complete bigoted rightist. I'm none of that. But I actually went and met with Palestinian people and actually spoke with them when I, I actually met real human beings and spoke with them. And it was dangerous, but we still did it because we cared, you know, about children. Of course. Old women. And uh, uh, we said we said a lot of things to each other. They, they would prefer to be free, as would every other old woman. Yeah. They would prefer not to live in a rape culture of violence be, in, headed by a a violent gang of thugs. That's what they would prefer like every other human. So um, I'm not, I only speak for those women all over this world. I have no allegiance to any country but the United States. I have allegiance to those countries. They owe the United States for even being allowed to exist absolutely what are we going to do about it we the united to. states is responsible for those quote unquote uh republics they always say democracies but it's democratic republics the united states is the big sister to those and what is the united states doing but betraying all of those what the hell is happening to the united states of america that's all i want to all I want people to think about. That's all I want to talk about. Because it ain't right. Our money is paying for every, the taxpayer of the U.S. is paying for everything around the world. Yeah. To not, and now we're going to pay for that bridge that a company took out. Not their insurance, but we. Yeah. Yeah, that they bridge thing's really as a mfer okay well we have to uh i mean we i could talk about israel all day because that's near and dear to my heart but um we did put out a call for questions we're not from talking the, about israel well no we have been but i'm saying we can continue to but do you want to i have some questions from fans that sent you a couple oh, weeks ago okay. i thought it'd be fun to switch up gears a little bit no yeah okay you want to keep talking i mean i could talk about israel all day if you want i just feel like I just feel like I don't understand why Israel is not allowed to do the things that every other country did. And I just, in, I'll give you an example. When I was talking to a lot of American patriots that hate Israel, they're like, they're committing all this stuff. And I was like, well, you live in America. Are you going to give your house back to the Native Americans that we soaked blankets with smallpox in? Because that's a war crime. This country was found on that shit. But you're all fucking gung ho. You have your American flag, MAGA, USA. But now you're saying Israel's doing bad shit. Go give your house back to the natives that you stole from. Countries do shit. People do shit. We take land. We kill. We're a violent fucking species. Why is this? land in war. We came out of that German shit, and now we know how to do worse than you ever imagined you could do, and we'll do it too, bitches. So why would you want to provoke us for that shit when you know we got we got the shit? We got yeah. every kind of shit. And we're not going to take your shit. So you better shut up your shit. I would say a Learn good general. Fair. Learn to play fair. I will say this. A good rule of thumb is if you don't want your civilians killed, 
don't provoke a world power by murdering and raping their babies in the middle of the night. Yeah, right. A, Hello. Yeah. Fafo. None won't be none, bitches. All right. So here's some questions. Oh, we should do ads too. Is Hannah near you? We no. should get knocked out because it's the midway point. A right, guy I'm, today, he told me, he goes, uh, on my phone. Lieberman, he said, Lieberman converted to Islam on his last deathbed, you know. Yeah. I said, no, he didn't. He died as a Jew like Mohammed and Jesus. The guy got all pissed. He said, they all died as Muslims. I said, don't give me that one. Islam culturally appropriated the Torah. Sit down. Well, now we're going to die. That's it. I'm telling you, no, I'm not going to take it no more. I speak for the Lord. I speak for the, I speak for the Torah. Deal with it, bitches. Shmooly. The reason you're taking shit, honey, is because I told you, just like I told you, slap in the face, you got to leave the Democrat Party because they hate you. And you, why are you over there? Because you like Cory Booker? What the fuck? Because you and yeah, him. You really better smart. come over here, Trump. What are you doing over there with Democrats? Dressing like that with a big old penis on your nose in front of your grandchildren. No. No, Shmooly. I, I, know you I know you promote the gay rights, but Shmooly. Look, honey, now you gotta leave the Democrat Party. No, no, no. Yeah, you uh -huh. can't defend Israel and and be a Democrat in today. That's uh -huh. just but I also want to say one thing in in defense of Shmuley because you no, know me. Hamas, hashtag no to Hamas. I love that. Me and Shmuley have had our. I don't personally like Shmuley. You and I used to fight about this for years. We went to Israel with him. You I don't guess. like him? What about no. we? Have with him in Israel. I did, and I liked his family, and but no, I've always had a problem with Shmuley. I, I, I just, it's just my thing. But I want to say, in his defense, especially his daughter Hannah, who I knew when we were out there, this sex shop thing they keep throwing in his face that they sell dildos and Jews. Hannah built this shop called Kosher Sex for married couples. It's a. I know it is a great thing because she's removing the shame Jews feel for having sex. That's a kosher sex thing because it is and it's, so much shame. It's, and it's a great thing she's doing. And her her father is like going, yes, it's right that Jewish women should not be shamed for having sex with their husbands. This is what the Orthodox are going through. The right. woman is always shamed. It's just, you know, these are, uh, you know, revolutionary, evolutionary, progressive things that are positive. I think so. You know, they're attacking Candace. You're wrong on that too, girl. I got to say that because you know what? If you're, or it's not just married, or if you're in a committed relationship, they're not selling dildos for like street hookers or anything like that. Well, it's, you never know what people are going to do with it. It doesn't matter. My point is Hannah's store is based off, this is a way to have more intimate, connected, love making sessions with someone you love. If you want to use a toy in the bed, that's not evil. That's a good I message. have to say, if you love somebody, you don't need none of that stuff. If, oh. you, if you hate somebody, you still are afraid <laughs> No. What if it's you're not a good lover like Michael? Like, I love you. Oh, I love you. Come no. here. I use if toys. You hate them, you're like, oh, I got to do something with you. Are you there, Hannah? I uh, I like sex toys because I'm not a, I'm not good in bed, and if it were left to me, Hannah would be very very disappointed woman, right? Hannah, are you there? She, she can't in? hear you. That's oh. horrible that you would say. Oh, I'm just joking. All right, we're gonna do the ads, and then we're gonna read questions. I hate people who use sex toys. That means they're not in love at all. They got to get for someone they love. No, I disagree with you. 100%. Now, love makes everything okay. No, you, you could have a love making session without a sex toy, of course, but if you're with a partner and it makes them feel good, it's a loving thing to make them now, feel good. Now, people use the sex toys with that. That's when they don't have a partner. You're wrong. Yes, about it that. is. Huh? It's if they don't have a partner, they're like, I'm going to get this sex robot. Well, no, but you can also use toys with your, a lot of people use toys with a partner. I can't believe No way. Them. Yes, they do. And maybe that's yeah. something you should try next time you have a boyfriend. It might, it might yeah, well. you like, you might like him more because if you're leaving it up to the guy and he's not good and he's like done in a 30 seconds, you're going to be disappointed and resent him this way. You'll, you'll still like him. Something to think done about. 30 seconds. That'd be heaven on earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh right that's a clip 
That was so good. All right. Is Hannah coming the hours and you're like, ah, oh, Christ, I can't take it no more. All right. Let's do our ads. Is Hannah in there or not? She's driving me crazy. Ow. Here she comes. Okay. I've been texting a lot of people. I saw, I saw a comment with him. Jake's on his phone on split screen. Like I'm producing. Oh, okay. Producing. Let's get these ads done. We're going to do them quick. Let's pay the bills and then let's get back to these questions and then we'll wrap it up talking about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Hannah, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. What's first? I didn't even get to say anything I want to say yet. This is the midway point. This is why we got to pay the ad. Just take a uh, damn ad break. Just do it quick. Just blast through it. You want to do TPC first? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Somebody so, said that's a shit company on the thing. Oh my God, Mom. What? We vetted them. They're they're vetted. We know they're board members. Don't read everything on the internet. Uh, what? Dr. Drew, Dr. Peter McCullough. They're on the board of TWC. Oh no, they're no there's no way. Why would they're, they be attacking them? Because they're probably because they're probably giving medicine to people that can't otherwise get it. Like you can't get ivermectin. Remember the whole horse paste bullshit? I this know it made me so mad because I'm like, God, they just came out the same way where they said ivermectin might be a cure for cancer, and so yeah. they come right away attack saying that this is all bullshit again. Well, but the we great. So you know, I'm very proud to represent this. Well, we'll I'm look. To read that. Yeah, no, I mean, we know Dr. Drew and Dr. McCullough is coming on the show one day. Like, it's just ivermectin and all these, like, amoxicillin, like, eight really crucial medications that you can order to your house without having to go to the doctor, without having to, like, the FDA, do you remember they shut, they shut down, you couldn't even take ivermectin at one point. Well, that's why most people got dropped from social media is because they said, hey, this stuff is, costs for pennies and uh, has no terrible side effects and is actually proven to work. Absolutely. And you know, they as a, this information for Christ's sake, of course. And you know that they've, the FDA's like had to, I'm reading this thing right here. Let me read this to you. As of Thursday, March 21st. So this is recent. The court ruled against the FDA and mandated the removal of all previous social media posts that specifically addressed the use of ivermectin for the treatment and prevention of COVID-19. So the FDA lied about ivermectin working for COVID-19, and now they've had they've been ordered by court to take back all that shit because they got caught lying. Ivermectin is a fine medication. It won the Nobel Peace Prize. Remember when Rogan took it and they, CNN made his face green and called it horse paste? So this How company great was Joe Rogan to do what Joe Rogan did. I was so proud to know him. That well, was a revolutionary act. For it was. And he, he made a good point. He said the problem with, with censoring me is that things that were not true a week ago are true now. And if you censor me and it oh, turns out it was true, that's the problem. So this company, TWC.health forward slash RB, right, Hannah, am I right? Doing this live. They have these medical emergency kits we talk about every week. They have travel kits too, but it has ivermectin. Yeah, we have the travel kits. It we has without it. Yeah, so you go on there. You're going to read this thing to these people, mom. But really, this is okay. a really good product, despite what you're hearing on the internet. If you have, it doesn't matter what you've heard. The bottom line is ivermectin is a is a helpful medication. Really and I think it's going to just get better and better with the things it's going to be proven to to uh, do. Ordering the kit is simple and takes less than two minutes. Go to twc.help forward slash RB and use code RB to purchase your kit with $30 off and free shipping. For the cost of a single doctor's visit, all eight prescription medications will be shipped right to your door. 2024 is the year to be prepared. It's an election year after all. Yeah. Safeguard your health today by going to twc.health forward slash RB and use RB at checkout. Yeah, it's very important. And, you know, we know the FDA lied. We know the medical community lied. We all know this because like Jessica at the beginning of the show is like, you're a fascist. Meanwhile, we were on the side of actual science, on the side of actual medicine, and you guys were pushing harmful vaccines. Aren't they smart, though? They go, um pisses me off actual science is bullshit fake yeah. science is the real deal <laughs> exactly like and uh in there and all the stars are like fake science is the real deal yeah science tm all right um let's do the my pillow one now hand you got that script this one you can just read to people it's a really okay. informative paste script so just do it when you're ready okay 
All of you out there know that Mike Lindell and my pillow no longer have the support of their box stores or shopping channels the way they used to. They've been part of the cancel culture, so they want to pass the savings directly on to you. They're having a $25 extravaganza. When Mike started my pillow, it was just a problem solution, one product company. Well, since then, with the help of his dedicated employees, they now have hundreds of products, some you may not even know about. To get the word out, they're having a $25 extravaganza. Two pack multi use My Pillows are just $25. My Pillow Sandals, which I love, $25. Their Best. six pack towel sets, $25. Brand new four pack dish towels, you guessed it, just $25. For the first time ever, the premium, premium My Pillows with all new Giza fabric, any size and any loft level, even king size, just $25. This amazing wow. offer won't last long, so order now. Just go to mypillow.com forward slash RB or call 800-973-9214 and use promo code RB. When you do, you will get free shipping on your entire order today. Awesome. Good read. I mean, that was just that was just concise. We don't have to blabber about it. Mike Lindell is going to be coming on this show, and he might actually fly. Oh, into a, probably he's when we get funny. back, huh? he's going to fly a private jet into our backyard and come hang out with us. How friggin' cool is that? Right into our backyard. Are we able to come? Oh, here in Texas. Yeah, the runway here in Texas. We're, getting, we're in Texas, and we have a runway here. So the hat should tell you we're in Texas. <laughs> I forget right, where I am. I've been right, going to the place. I don't know where the hell I am. All right, what's the next ad hand? I should have knew it was Texas since I've got my buck sticks here in the fridge. Yeah, and I love how you're speaking Texan now. I should have nude. <laughs> That's an interesting take. Is there more ads, Hannah? Because I want to get back uh, to the show. Talk about our, uh, the sat phones and the free phones. No, I'm going to do sat and C60. But what's what's left for paid ads? Gold. Gold coat, and you're editing this out, I hope. Which part? Like what you're talking about. No, fuck it. We're going live. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't have time to edit. So I get this. Is what's like. Throw it on the shit. Hurry up! Welcome. I want to start talking about what I want to talk about. We're almost done. RBLikesGold.com. We we were pushing. I just got to do this real quick, mom. Just just let me do this. We had a gold company. We moved to a new one. It didn't really work out at first because uh, Gold Co. was selling these IRA kits that not a lot of people that listen to the show want to put their whole retirement in. So I called Gold Co. and I said, look, just let people buy silver and gold. I know it's not as big money for you, but that's what people need. They need to protect their wealth. They need to buy gold. If they want to buy IRA, give them the option. But we want to sell individual gold. That's what we used to do. That's what we believe in. So to their credit, they've changed the landing page. They've changed the business plan. And now rblikeschool.com is much easier. You want people to be able to afford, you know, they don't have to do everything. They just do a little bit nibble at a time. Absolutely. And they when they buy ads on this show, a lot of times they're like, oh, Roseanne Barr, like, we'll just, she'll push these big ticket items and everyone will buy it. But it's like, we well, speak you, to- I will. Well, we speak to the real working class of America. We're not an elitist show. We're talking to like real Americans who don't have that kind of money. So- just give them the option, let them customize. And anyway, go to rblikesgold.com for but us. But I am telling you, gold and silver, those are things that never lose their value, unlike a dollar I'm bill. So no, buy fucking that. gold. Think buy gold that. and silver. Buy for, gold and silver. For a free gold and silver kit, go to www.rblikesgold.com. That's www.rblikesgold.com. Fuck yeah. And, and, and it does support our show. It doesn't, we don't ask you to pay for this show. We don't even ask you to subscribe on YouTube anymore. And notify because they're fucking We're comments. Jews and we love selling gold. Yeah, Just go there, click on it, buy a fucking silver. It helps us. They'll buy more shit from us and we can keep going. Right. I mean, let's be it honest. It's right? a good buy. A good, good, good buy. Good. And then uh, I just want to talk real quick and then we can get into your thing, mom. But we did a show with Chris Hoare about satellite phones uh -huh. uh, we've been pushing this this is a show he was a smart guy he was awesome but i saw in the comments and it was like i was like do people fucking watch don't the show read the comments that's what gets me upset too don't read comments well they i like to read the comments because they're usually pretty flattering at least to me but <laughs> i'm just kidding but no the comments were like 
Satellite phones are too expensive. Meanwhile, we had fucking Chris Horon from the company saying phones are free now. This is the same yeah. thing we did. I called them and I said, you're not going to sell a thousand dollar phone to our audience. That's fucked up. Give them the phones for free, like a cell phone. Have them pay the monthly thing. So they changed their entire business plan to give you. You make me so proud, son. You remind me of me at a young age when I used to go into the uh, head of the ABC network and go, "Listen, don't sacrifice these children. Just bow. Yes. Just have them say a certain prayer and let them keep their lives." Fuck yeah, we don't need to like take advantage of people. A satellite phone is a good product. Gold and silver is a smart product. We're pushing medicine, amoxicillin, ivermectin. We're selling stuff that's smart for you to buy. We're not making a lot of money off it. But the thing is, we understand that these companies are predatory. So we find companies that aren't predatory and they tailor to you. So you get a free fucking satellite phone. It's at 123.com. You, you know sign what you're doing up. there, Jake? You're flipping the switch is what I always told you about how to do because people have to realize people have the power. Not yes. these organizations that think they rule us, but us, because there's a billion of us and 10 of them. Think That's about right. it. www.sat123.com and tell them Roseanne sent you. And get a goddamn Please. cell phone. And I mean, give me a call on your satellite phone. Oh, that might get people to buy it. I mean, listen, you know hey, what's going on in the world. Give me a call on my satellite phone particularly if they want to discuss the Bible. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Okay, I'll talk to them. That, that actually might get people to buy the phone. Because I, I, I think it's so fucking weird. Like, why would you not want a satellite phone with everything you know going on right now? Like, they've already shut down the grid. We saw what happened in Hawaii. Like, at this point, it's hey, not even... Hey, don't take it lightly what they just did in Maryland. Yeah. That is going to cripple the supply lines to the West Coast. Americans are so stupid. They're like, they, I mean, I won't even go into how stupid they're. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's not okay. It's an attack on our supply lines, just like all the trains. Remember all the train? Remember all the trains? Yeah, these Palestine. All the trains of fire. War Americans. Yeah, we are. We are. It's sad to say. Hello. All right. Hello. Well, we can get we can get back to the show. I think C60 is the only thing left to talk about, right, Hannah? Yep. All right. Well, just give mom they that. Can take the C60 and pour it right up their nostrils. <laughs> to get their minds working right. Can we just talk about C60? Because uh, they've been with us since the beginning. But this is a product you actually use. You love it. Show them, we're just, show them what it is without burping. Wait, I got to burp some more. Okay. They're, they're going to love this when I say, hey. She will. She better because... <laughs> We only push products we use. This is in our house. Hannah uses this. Mom uses it. I don't use it, which is probably why I look. My cool. son Buck uses it. When, yeah. when I went home, I got Buck on it. And yeah. it's really helped his complexion. He's 28 years old, um, mm -hmm. unemployed for years. Yeah. Although he did get a degree. He's my only child that ever graduated from college. My Even you, Jake, none of my other children could ever settle down and go to college. Yeah, I was too smart. Well, they were learning disabled is what it was called. Yeah. No, he did graduate. Short by shit. Yeah. Little and bit of short by shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did go to short by But anyway, C60, this is not an ad now. This is actually a product we like. We we, we don't. This is just something. One every day. morning, every night. That's why my skin looks so good. I mean, it really it is. Not a lie. So tell them where it looks too good. Anyways, I got this Lady Gaga makeup, and that's what I put on because we were doing the show. Mm -hmm. But I don't good. really like it. I think I look better when I just put this on, right? Look at my other shows. I mean, when you I were using I six. I'm just with this without the Lady Gaga makeup. When you, were using, yeah. when you were using just that, that's when the Madonna and Roseanne meme went viral. So maybe there's something to it. All right, Hannah, tell, them where to, tell her where to go, and then we'll get back to the show. Go to www.c60evo.com forward slash Roseanne and use code Roseanne for 10% off your purchase. My favorite product is the C60 Evo Youth Renew Rose Activator with ESS60 and the luscious UTH29 cream. Um, this stuff, you mix them together in your palm, warm them up. And I mean, you almost look alive. 
yeah, you look great. I mean, that's this is what you actually use. I want people to know this is actually. Yeah, I did do the Lady Gaga thing, but I don't know. I hate my hair. You know, oh my what is, I don't what is I hair? my friendship with Shannon over this haircut. You know, you're very upset about your haircut. Let's let's talk. No, about I hate it. it. Shannon said you've got to wash your hair with Dawn detergent twice, and then wash it with the purple shampoo so it'll go all the way blonde. I'm like, bitch, this looks nothing like the picture you told me it was going to look like. I think it looks good. What is it you don't like? Is it too short? Because it's shorter than your last haircut. Well, I don't do that. You look like a same color as your skin. I think we need to get the toner out. And is that what it is? It's just the same color as your skin. That's what it same is. Same color as my skin? Yeah, it's kind of like your skin tone color. It's is that great short? Yeah, I the don't know. The haircut's cute. The haircut's cute. The haircut's yeah, you look good. You look good. I mean, it's you flew the of it. You need to wash. You need to get the toner out, and it'll brighten up. And we can do that really? tonight, or we can yeah, do that look, It looks like Ellen it DeGeneres. It's going to look just like Joey Heatherton. And I don't think I look anything who's, like Joey Heatherton. Who's Joey Heatherton? I'm looking <laughs> this up. Who's Joey Heatherton? A sex bomb. Oh, well, I'll show the people who the Joey Heatherton. Where's the camera? Yeah, it does look like that. Yeah. I was thinking you look more like uh, Ellen DeGeneres. No, don't say that. <laughs> Do I? No, I'm just fucking with I you. Feel like Ellen. I mean, I can't tease anyone's hair. Like that Anne Heche. Anne yeah. Heche, I have to admit, like last time I saw Anne Heche, you know how my book, Roseanarchy, is all about me? trying to control my giving the Jewish evil eye to people I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know that that's what Roseanarchy is about. Did you know that, Jake? I didn't, but Michael Malice called me today. He just read it and thought it was like one of the most underrated books of all time, he told me. He thought it was brilliant. Why does he not call me, the fucker? Where because is he? He was on a plane. No, he's he wants to see you like tonight or tomorrow. Or this. He just didn't want to come on and talk about Israel. He wants to do more research, and I understand. I don't care if he talks about Israel. I want to talk about anti-Semitism and how it's all KGB. It's well, he'll talk about it. He's going to come. He's going to come. He's got all sorts of secrets to share with us inside on RFK and Tulsi. I, I wish he would do it on the podcast, but I'll tell you this. If you really want to talk to him in a way that's public because we love him, um, he has invited you to do his show again if you're into it. Oh, I'd love it. Okay. Um, otherwise, well, what did I just say that I, I wanted to talk to him about? The KGB and um, we'll yeah, anti Sam being the whole fucking KGB deal. You know, well, could I ask you one last question? About, like, there was some other thing about it I wanted to talk to him about. Oh, well, anti Semitism, I've always had a problem with that word because I feel like, well, it's, it's a German word, it's not, I mean, I. It was a, a Nazi word because right. the Nazis said that the Jews were not German. They were a Semitic tribe. So they classified the Jews in Germany as Semites. Right. So that's where it came from. So that's why I say just don't even use that anymore because it's a Nazi word. Yeah. And, you know, Jews live in the Middle East now. You have their own state. So you can't, it's passe. Right. You just have to say Jew hater. Right. So that is right. word. You know, I've been very active in that community to talk about words and the power of words uh, in combating anti-Semitism. I've been very active in that. Yeah, you have. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a very hard fight because you're you're dealing with well, people see them as masterminds. They see the left as masterminds in um, propaganda, but they're really not. Like I always say, they're such shit writers. They're not they're, good. They have no truth in anything they write, and that's a shit writer, as we know, right, yeah. son? That's a, a good, good writer is, you know, uh, you know, uh, juxtaposes truths, not yeah. falsehoods. Duh, you guys are stupid motherfuckers. I'm so sick of stupid motherfuckers. Anyways. That's a really good point because this this propaganda by both the left and let's call it 
fucking K- Qatar, however you say it, Muslim Brotherhood. Like it, everyone's like the Jew runs the media, but everybody has their hooks in the media. Everybody has their different channels and different outlets. Fucking and Muslim. You know, a whole bunch of Nazis. Do you know how they came over here and yeah. operated the paperclip? Well, a whole bunch of them went to the Middle East and converted to Islam, like John Brennan. Yeah. Did you know that, son? I did know that. I did. I'm getting the questions loaded up. But yeah, no, that. Fourth Reich. They're yeah. never stop until they are stopped. And so they're insidious, and now they got themselves involved through the Muslim Mus, Mufti of Jerusalem in a, a group called uh, the Palestinian Cause, invented by, um, what's his name, uh, Yasser Arafat, who is actually the son of a Nazi, the grandson of a Nazi. Is that true? I've never heard that. It is true. Okay. Well, I wish I could look that up. But look I'll, it up. I'll, it's up there. Look at Google it. Okay, I'll do that while we while we talk. But even even so, it's it's they're more in line. It's Hamas a biblical and of the Book of Esther, which of course they don't like. Hitler was terrified of the Book of Esther. I'd like to refer everyone to watch my Purim address, which is up on Rumble. I saw it up on Rumble on um. Uh, two sites on Rumble, my Purim address to the okay. nations. We'll it's put it on, in the snippets, Anna. It's on uh, two sites, Lowell's and um, my friends. Um, well, Lowell has it. Well, Mr. Arafat's mentor was Haj Amin al Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Right. In- with hatred towards Israel. The Grand Mufti led Palestinian Arabs from 1920 until Mr. Arafat succeeded him in 1967. So go yeah. back to Hitler and the Grand Mufti. Okay. I like how people are saying this. People are saying the unedited podcast now. I kind of like it. I work very hard so they don't see all this stuff. Um, but I kind of like that they see. Right. This is backstage pass. All right. What the Mufti said to Hitler, the Arab, this is a good point. This first sentence, the Arabs were Germans. I'm sorry. The Arabs were Germany's natural friends. Hajamin al Husseini told the Nazi leader in 1941, because they had the same enemies, namely the English, the Jews and the communists. So I was going to say a minute ago that Hamas and Palestinian people and Arabs in general, Muslims in general, definitely align more with Nazis and Jews definitely align more with Christians. And I'm, I'll probably get in trouble for saying that, but that's just, just look at it objectively. It, it, I don't know if that's true, but I think yeah. Jews and Hindus align greatly. They do. Um, the Arabs could be more useful to Germany as allies than might be apparent at first glance, both glance both for geographical reasons and because of the suffering inflicted upon them by the English and the Jews. Furthermore, they had the close relationships with all Muslim nations. Nations. So yeah, Hitler definitely was heavily embedded with the Mufti and the Arab Legion, it says here. I don't want to read the whole Look article. at founding of Muslim Brotherhood by Hitler. And we encourage everyone else to do this. We could be wrong. Do your, do your own, own research. Yeah. Yeah. We're f- and if we're wrong, tell us. We'll admit we're wrong. Don't accept anything I'm saying. Do your research. That's what Q the seventeenth. Q is about seventeen, and the Book of Esther is the seventeenth book of the Bible. But anyways, just do your own research. Do it. Yeah, I'm gonna get too deep. I'm gonna just tell people to do it. We'll we'll do it next time because I I can't. Just look up Hitler founding Muslim Brotherhood. You did, and there's a bunch of there's a look bunch up, of, Okay, then look up Yasser Arafat's grandfather. Yep. Is a Nazi. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let people do that. Okay, do it. I don't want them to watch me Google uh, uh, poorly. So, but the point is, Hitler was involved. The point, in is, the point and, is, there's a war going on between the Nazis and the Jews. It's been going on for a long, 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 long time and since the beginning of time before they were nazis they were called other things so yeah all right well i think we should wrap up this podcast with questions from the audience unless there's more things you want to say but you know. no i'd like to see what they want me to say maybe well, we my put, i don't know what else put, are you saying well we put out a, a was it a tweet hannah some time ago um 
where we ask people to ask questions for Roseanne. So these are the ones that we got. Um, mm -hmm. When you're ready. So this is from someone named Kelly Moore. Is there a book or books that you recommend to gain a better understanding of what the truth is regarding Israel and the Jewish people? Why are they or the land at the center of everything? Your knowledge is beyond anything or anyone I know. Well, I bet you love that question. Did you type this as someone else or is this really? Hey, just... I'm pretending <laughs> <to her. laughs> All right. That's really more. Go ahead and answer it. There are several books, but, you know, I'd have to sit down and really, uh, I couldn't just do it off the top of my head. But. Uh, well, point them in a direction. Are there people? I, that should do a, I should do a class or a sheer, that's what they're called. You know, a speech on it. I should get a speech on it up there. Should I, do, I want to do speech on that kind of stuff here so people can know. Because I think it's very relevant that people need to know about the Bible right now. I don't want to look like an idiot, but it's so relevant. Every time I look at it, it blows my mind. I, I want people to know. Well, for like sure. I, know. I want you to, I wanted to corner you on air where everyone could see it. And this is how I can manipulate and control you behind the scenes as your Sven Gali or whatever. But Rumble, right. wants, Rumble wants you to do a second show that's live, that's unedited on top of the podcast. Isn't that the one where they want me to do the porn? No, that's the other that that company eventually turned down because <laughs> I sent them your gear magazine photos and they said we're no longer interested. That was uh, fun. <laughs> just kidding. No, this oh is wrong. Gear magazine. They was trying to talk me into doing horrible. No, I'm really. I want to say thank you for doing Gear magazine and Vanity Fair in lingerie when I was in high school. I wanted to thank you personally. I'm for sorry. That we'll talk about that another time. No, I'll, I'll talk about it in my tell-all after you die. But anyway, what I want to say is Rumble wants you to do a second show every, every week. If you're up to it, it would be live. I want to, I don't even think I'll be a part of it. It won't be edited. You could just blabber about the Bible or whatever you want. Blabber about the Bible. Oh, my God, that's the title. Blabber <laughs> <laughs> about the Bible. Well, will you do it? Blabber Are you going to do it? Bible. I sure as heck will. All right, good, because that will get some more money. And then, uh, no, you know, so they won't look like such fools once they get up there. To the pearly gates. I love it. Okay, next That's question. I really don't want to look like an idiot. Trust That's me. True. All right, this is from Jordan Pager. The question is, I love you so much. You've always been a pioneer and supportive of LGBT. As a gay man, I'm curious on your thoughts regarding LGBT as you have spiritually grown. I have always struggled with wanting a relationship with God, but feeling like God doesn't accept me because I'm gay. That's very sad. With your studies of Torah and other religions, I think you have so much wisdom and would love to know your thoughts. What's his, his name? Is? His name is Jordan Pager. Is this something you shouldn't answer since we're Jordan? I am so I love you so much that you was asking me this, Jordan. Here's what it is, Jordan. I'm going to be real honest with you. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what you do or think or feel, God loves you so much. All he wants is for you to come to him with a pure heart to ask for him to show you yourself so mm -hmm. you can grow. He doesn't he care. You to trust him that he'll show you the right things and that you come with no shame. There's no shame in nothing. You, He loves you. You don't got no shame. You go accept that love. You connect. And uh, that's what I got to say for yourself. I love it. And as long as your sexual partners are of age. Well, of course. Of course. All right. This next question. It's a long sexual, the, the dark night of the soul when it concerns a sexual journey, dear, is a painful, painful way to go. But you got to go. You got to do it. You got to walk it. I'm here to tell you, you can do it. A lot of us have, oh, hundreds of millions of us have. And you mm. can do it too. All right. Next question is from Stacy Hutchinson. Roseanne, hi there. Hi, hon. 
You didn't need to say that, Stacy. Next time, just get to the fucking point. All right. I have adored you in my entire life, and I have been trying to get my family to listen and support your podcast, but I keep getting resistance because of the late night show you did when you were selling your book. The one where you said that you sold your soul to the devil when you were a teenager. My family says you're controlled opposition and are part of the club that I hear you condemn constantly. Could you address this, please? I'd really like my family and others on the fence without supporting you due to you saying that you sold your soul to know what is, isn't. Oh, I am so glad you said that and asked that because I have talked about it a few times. Well, here's what I'm going to say. The whole book is a whole story about, see, I, it's a story. Uh, it's a fictional story. Terrible, yeah. Right? yeah. I wrote it as a fictional story. But it's like, well, I wrote it. Here's how it goes. That that I sold my soul to the devil that I could get a boyfriend without having to lose any weight. <laughs> and it worked, clearly. So you have you're saying right now you have sold your soul to the devil, right? Is that what you're because well, you got a new boyfriend. You know, I was writing it like it's a joke, right? And I say, well, then I got a whole bunch of husbands and this and that. And uh, um, then later, I have a lot of shame about having sold my souls to the devil. So I go to my rabbi. This is the, how the book finishes up, you see. And I go to my rabbi. I say, I have so much shame because I sold my soul to the devil so that I could get a boyfriend without having to get famous and not have to lose any weight to get a boyfriend. And he says to me, because I had such a wonderful rabbi who, who taught me about how much God loves all of us. Because mm -hmm. I didn't remember that God loved us. I thought he just hated us and thought we were scums. Right. <laughs> I forgot about he loved us. Mm -hmm. But he says, uh, he says, uh, um, what day did, did you write a contract? He was so brilliant. He goes, did you write the contract with Satan? I said, I did. I wrote up a contract and uh, I signed an X in my, I pricked my finger, I signed an X in the blood. But this is fictional. So that's what I was going to say, because they're going to take this clip. Story. And gonna take it, and this they're gonna take story. It Later, I'll tell you what really happened. This is a story, people. This is the fictional part. Thank you. I, yeah, I did. I, I signed it next time I, with the devil. I put the contract. He goes, when did you sign it? I said, I signed it on the holy day of Shabbat, of course. And he goes, well, you may not know this, but on Shabbat, that's the devil's day off. Yeah. The devil don't exist on Shabbat because he can't exist on a holy day. So you know, the contract is moot, Roseanne. Right. That's yeah. how the story ends. So just to be clear, this is a fictional story. You're probably okay. And when you say sold your soul, the nullification of shame. You're not. You did That's not actually right. sell your soul to the devil. You you're talking yeah. about wanting to become the story famous. I told about right. the nullification of shame after uh, having some abuse as a child because shame, my, shame is a big part of having abuse as a child. Absolutely. My favorite thing about you is you'll, you'll yeah. tell these, these stories in inventive ways to make a point. You think it's going to land where people are going to have like well, this. It's kind of, you try to go, I tried to write allegory in my book, yeah. Rose Anarchy. I was like, man, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to write allegory. Yeah. Because I love allegory. That's why I love reading biblical stories and stuff. Yeah. Those are all allegory, and I, I love to read them and then other people's opinion of them. And, uh, the difference between religious allegory and mythological allegory, I've always been interested in that, but you know, just something I've been interested in, you know. You, always, you do this thing where you like, I know you, where you, you really want to, and it's true. It's like you, you think of the magic of words, like words are spells. We talk about this all the time. If you say the right chain of words, you've done this on the podcast a bunch of times. So yeah. I know in your heart, it's always good. Like I'm going to say something that's going to touch people. It's going to wake them up. But what's funny is a lot of times those things are taken out of context and they're like, oh, Roseanne sold or sold the devil or denied the Holocaust. And there's a backlash every time you try and do that. And it's hard as your son to constantly watch that and go, my God, people are fucking stupid. But you know, I'm not going to be mean to this 
person asking a question. It's nice of her to ask, but this is a. No, I mean, it, it's just like some people. Well, uh, it's the in and out of it. It's the yin and yang, you know, because like some people will hear things on the come in and some will hear it on the come out. You know, some will hear it in the negative and some will hear it in the positive. But it's all the same thing in the, you know, in the in the big eight, you know, well, you know, in infinity at that moment where, you know, everything meets up in the in the thing, the figure eight. But right there, everything meets up It's that, you know. All right. Well, I have two more questions and then we can wrap up. Right. Oh, I don't want to quit. I'm keeping going. I know, but we're already at an hour 20. I got to download it and upload it. I don't care. I well, want to go. I don't then, care. Then, then do well, your damn. Other sons of a bitch. I'm having fun. I want to answer questions all night. Yeah, well, there's only two more anyway. But anyway, Rumble. I to talk to people, as I've told you, and you and all the Satanists are keep trying to deny me the privilege. Why don't you do your weekly rumble show on top of this? You could do all questions. There you go, people. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, you mentioned, this is from Christy Loqui. I hope I'm saying that right. You're not, I'm sure. You mentioned recently that country music is the most satanic people of all. Can you elaborate? No, I didn't say country music is satanic. I said the country music structure is composed of a lot of Satanists. They're talking about rap music being devil worshiping. Well, these snake handling goddamn you know what, that is what this here is. They're devil worshiping snake handlers. I'm but how do you tell the country music? Yeah. It's not all country music. They're this pagan one. witches. Now, they're all a bunch of witches. They're women as witches. All over the world, wherever you go, they keep trying to lie on it. But women are witches, and that's what's fucking everything up. Nobody will say it but me. I oh. used to be a witch, so I know. I all met right. with the world's mightiest witches across all channels in every continent. I know that there's witches, but as I realized and told each one of them face to face, do you know what I said to each one of these witches? from the queen of this and the princess of that to the uh, grand dame and duchess of this and here and what you have, the ambassadoress and what have you. You know what I said to them? What? I said it like this. You, you will not have no say not have no say. That's double negative, right? Now they have. They will have say, or they won't have. You will have no say. <laughs> you <laughs> will have no say over the goings on. <laughs> but is country music say of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my friend? Is country music say That is. That is yeah. how it is. I understand, but she's saying Christian country music. She feels is like the best messaging out there so she's a little intrigued and confused why you No, but i'm not talking oh i love the messaging because they know what sells the right. christian music audience it's it's the greatest music in the world it just makes you feel good it's got right. a great, it's got a great message but you know how they get their stars they abuse kids too just like in rap they do the same stuff you gotta have sex with these old ugly motherfuckers or you won't get up there but it's not it's more satanic than. And you got to worship the devil. It's have sex, worship the devil in <laughs> any business in the world. Hello. So it's all business, not That's specific. To business. It's not Hello. specific. You're saying it's not specific to country music because you said a couple of weeks ago that it was the worst of all, but you're taking that back. You're saying all businesses, all music industry, they're all like that, right? No, Are but the country music, <laughs> that shit is the worst. It is okay. The so worst that's the was the gospel music. That was where it was the worst because what what they were doing to gospel music singers with their talent. Oh my God! You just need to read about it. Okay, so you're saying not country music. Into the artist. You're saying the industry is is more nefarious than country, but the messaging country is fine. It's it's good music. 
We, mm, yeah. Okay. okay. They're not putting satanic messages. Yeah, in no, I'm talking about the vampires. Okay. What Say what I'm saying again, because I like how you put that. You're saying that the music industry and the country music industry is nefarious in what they do to the artists, but the actual messaging within the country music is good messaging. Because you said it sounded oh, like yeah, exactly because good said. Um, yeah, yes. yeah. The people at the top, though, they get really scared that they're not going to be able to stay at the top. So right. think about that. Well, shit, they P Diddy. This, a lot of shit. We didn't even talk about P Diddy arrest, but that's apparent. That's one of the now, online rumors. I really like to talk about Jake. Yeah, let's talk Where about that. that. That was the last question. But yeah. the P Diddy thing. One of the rumors was that he was taking women into the record studio. This is a rumor. And he would say, hey, you want a record deal? And they would say, yeah, yeah, sure. And then he would like gang rape them and film it and say, you better do what I do, what I tell you, or I'm not going to give you the contract and they control. Them. That's the Epstein Island thing. That's the theory. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to be the reasoning behind the raid, in my opinion. He definitely was, he was involved in trafficking and all sorts of stuff, allegedly. Or what do you know that I don't know? You look like you have a different I never opinion. even heard nothing like that. I, I it's just think. a theory I've heard. Um, what now? Well, I know they got a picture of him with that Rachel Chandler. Yeah, Q talked about um, him a few years ago um, with with Miss Handler, um, and of course he's a huge Democrat donor to Hillary Clinton. So the thing that I'm confused about is why the FBI is why the FBI is raiding a Democrat. Chandler, you know, the Chandler family founded Los Angeles. Yes, and they uh, own the port of Los Angeles. Well, I think if I can you know what my theory is? I think P. Diddy is low on the totem pole. I do yeah, too. Doing drugs and trafficking. They all do it. It's not just hip hop. It's all people in Hollywood. They all do this shit. But I think they raided his house uh, to destroy evidence of the higher ups. That's my feeling. And he's going to be. A lot of people him. are saying that. And that could be. That's true. What, I mean. what do you think it is? I think he had some damn good taste to fly over there to Antigua because I remember when I went over there to Antigua and uh, I don't know if a volcano hit over there. I can't remember something happened, but there was that place called Jumby Bay and I stayed at this great place there for a number of days. It was beautiful. I had a gorgeous house right on the ocean with a uh, pool that you can't believe. Sounds and nice. um, it was just so great that you would go in these golf carts all around the island. And of course, I right away wanted to go and see where the workers live because, you know, I'm just a pain in the ass old woman, bitter and full of rage. So I did that. But there was a lot of goats down there. There's always a lot of goats where workers live, isn't there? I don't know. Yeah, for see? sure. Goats are a good working animal. They're, they're working yeah. like a mule. Well, make sure. Yeah, goats are a good. A lot of people eat goats, you know. Yeah, I do. I think that's a. I know in Hawaii, they sure do. I love this podcast because I ask you, Mom, what's your theory of the P. Diddy arrest and human trafficking? And 30 seconds later, you're like, lots of people I eat goats. Oh, it looks like. Okay, like okay, let me get on track there. The, yeah. P. Diddy, the P. Diddy arrest. Yeah. I do think. Well, we'll have to see what happens. I don't think he's been arrested. He's not been arrested. You'd say the P. Diddy, uh, what do they, when they take go into your house? The raid, the raid of his home. He, he hasn't been arrested, but I think they arrested his kids, which I thought that was hilarious that he ran off and made his kids get arrested. I thought, yeah, P. Diddy. <laughs> the man right. after your heart. I'll be in the Caribbean, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have no doubt he was trafficking uh, uh, drugs and women. I have no doubt. First of all, well, P. Diddy. He's got an adopted white daughter that's missing, 16 uh, years old. Well, let me just tell you this. P. P. Diddy was a record producer. Of, this is the way I remember it. I think it was Notorious B.I.G. He used to put himself in the guy's fucking music videos, which yeah, I thought was I, I've hated this guy forever. Oh, I mean, that is cool. It's cool, but it's so douchey. It's like Notorious B.I.G. is the talent, right? He comes in, he's like, oh, I wrote these sick beats. And he did. he's like, cool, I'm going to sit in a hot tub over here and you're going to film it in your video. I'm not paying for your video. It's a dick move. I've never liked it. And no, then it isn't. It's genius. No, it's bullshit. I don't even do that on your podcast. If You fucking, already do, bitch. And then, then Big dies, right? 
I think he died of a heart attack or something. Oh, remember. yeah, right. But then P. Diddy writes a single. Day. He writes a single where he's on a motorcycle and he crashes. I like, you know what, how they do. P. Diddy writes a single, his first rap song, the way I remember it, about B.I.G. that died so that he could become a rapper. He was a producer that wanted to be a rapper. He inserted himself and used talented people and used their back. So I fucking hated this guy for a long time. Then he acts like he's super talented and some big wig professional. He's a fucking douchebag. So I have no doubt he's trafficking women and drugs. It doesn't surprise me. He's a piece of shit record producer in Hollywood and the music industry. I know he's a piece of shit because he wouldn't be in that industry if he wasn't. You better watch what you're saying when these black people start listening into what you're saying. What's That's his name? Clive Davis. Is yeah, that he raped me, Houston. Clive Huff Davis. I gave him, you know, my book, Rosanarchy. This is what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. In my book, Rosanarchy, I mentioned freely that I, I mean, frequently, that there were times in my life where I was unable to control sending off the Jewish evil eye of an old woman into the eye, the unreceptive eye of someone I deserved, I felt deserved it. And right. Clive Hoof Davis is someone that I, I did that too because I was there at the uh, uh, American Idols and my little son Buck, he was only nine years old and he, he had hopes and dreams and thought humanity was good. And he turned around and they were honoring Clive Dave, Clive and Hoof Davis. And Buck turned around because we were sitting in front of Clive Davis. Mm -hmm. And Buck turned around and he said, good job, Clive. Which, how fucking cool is that for a little kid? That's and pretty Clive, cool. Clive looked straight ahead and ignored him. Well, at least he didn't I rape him. turned around and give him the Jewish mother, evil motherfucking eye, which is like this. Here's how it goes. Oh no, yeah, oh, no you will not, you will not embarrass my son. No, no, no. Oh no, fellow Jew, you will not embarrass my son in public, fellow Jew. Oh no, oh no, 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 fellow Jew, you will not embarrass my son nor myself in public, fellow, fellow Jew. I love that. All right, we got to wrap up, Ma. I got to get this out. We're behind a deadline. Say your final piece. Livia's on her way home too with Gigi. Oh um, well, oh, I my ultimate message is don't don't discount me. It is to your peril that you it. ignore me. Sounds threatening, and I love that. I want to say Amanda Bynes. That documentary came out about Nickelodeon and all those fucking pedos there this week. I knew it. Didn't I say it? Of course. We all have said it. We, You and I have been talking. You have been talking about this elite pedophile ring for 30 fucking years in Hollywood. They told you crazy. Now it's all it's all known. It's all understood. And everyone's like, I can't believe Amanda Bynes was sexually abused. Like, have you not followed her Twitter fucking 10 years ago? Obviously sexually abused. Obviously MK Ultra. Obviously traumatized. That's why she's mentally ill. That's why a lot of people in Hollywood are. They're rapists out there. They're P. Diddy types. They're all over. Clive and fucking Hoof. They're a disgusting, satanic breed. Get the fuck out of Hollywood and do your own podcast if you have any talent. Thank you. Anything else, Mom? God bless America. <laughs>